Hello everyone, welcome. Thank you for coming. My name is Alex. I am a contract engineer at Gatsby and I currently have the pleasure of working with our partners and those in the open source to help them create better integrations and source plugins with Gatsby. So we are have a super packed schedule, so let's get started. Gatsby, it's a meta framework, there's React, there's GraphQL, there's all these good things, and there's tons of uh, plugins and APIs and stuff to help you build things. And those APIs and that data layer are what we're talking about today. And to give you a quick introduction, if I want to add something to the data layer, I need a, an APL called source nodes. Now, once you're in the source nodes, you have you can do whatever you want. So you can be fetching data off of Mars. Once we have databases living there, uh, that is fine. You just need to, as long as Node.js has the ability, you can fetch data. And ultimately, that data gets stuffed into a function called create node. And it creates a node within the Gatsby data lake. And with that backing, we run into a problem. What if? where we're sourcing from is already GraphQL. After all, GraphQL has all this introspection and schema query ability that should make it a lot easier to integrate. We're basically having to recreate a GraphQL server in Gatsby just to source from a GraphQL endpoint. That seems redundant. It seems like there's a better way that should just work. Before we go on, let me give you some numbers to put this problem into perspective. So our most downloaded plugins in the Gatsby ecosystem, plugins that are used on almost every site, see anywhere from 1 to 1.5 million downloads per month. Contentful, which happens to be our most popular CMS source plugin, but is also like the next most popular plugin period sits at 230,000. It's one of the most used plugins, except for one. And that other plugin is Gatsby Source GraphQL, which will source data from any GraphQL endpoint. It's got its problems, but despite them, it's insanely popular. So let's talk about those problems, how we're trying to resolve this problem so they're not there anymore and fix 294,000 problems. All right, so we used to have to make a custom source plugin. We covered that. Then we had Gatsby Source GraphQL. So here's the problem with Gatsby Source GraphQL. It uses something called schema stitching. And this was invented about a year and a half ago in Gatsby to solve this problem. But it created problems. See, schema stitching doesn't use the Gatsby data layer. It kind of circumnavigates it and just makes it look like one piece, but it's really not. And where that comes into problem is content like Markdown. So usually in the Gatsby ecosystem, Markdown comes in with the MIME type of Markdown, and the Markdown plugin in Gatsby looks for the MIME type, finds it, parses the Markdown, creates all the data, it's structured, and adds it to your GraphQL schema so it's there and available to you to use that rendered HTML directly in your React components. It's super easy, you don't have to ship code client side and slow down your user's browsers. Unfortunately, schema stitching doesn't allow that. None of those APIs are accessible on the data you, you pull in via schema stitching. So none of that's possible and none of that ecosystem works. So it's very broken and it's very confusing for new developers. And this is why we've created Gatsby GraphQL Source Toolkit. And by we, I mean Vlad. Vlad has been working on the Gatsby team to put this out there and open source it about a month ago into beta, and hopefully it's going to be one here soon. And this is what we're going to get into here quickly. But the toolkit basically is a set of primitives that help you do introspection and code generation to automatically query all this data from your GraphQL endpoint for you. So let's take a look. So here in our Gatsby site, we have a lot of things going on. In our local plugins folder, though, let's check out our source dgraph. 
So there's a lot of code here. There's about 180 lines, but, and here are three endpoints and there's source nodes we talked about. And these are the three uh, Gatsby APIs we end up having to implement, but most of this is boilerplate. Most of this is directly copied and pasted from Vlad's example. The only thing I had to customize is up here and it's right here. It's how I'm getting the different types out of the database. And this was more how I built the schema and less about anything else. So this says, hey, get all the types, filter them down to just the valid types. And I also added additional filters so I didn't have to fetch all those types. I only fetched the types I wanted, which in this case is just film. And this is what uh, this ultimately ended up creating is a series of queries and fragments that the toolkit then uses to fetch and source all this data and keep everything synchronized and up to date. We'll see more on that in a bit. So with that said, we now have a site that's working and we can actually make these queries here in our GraphQL database. So let's use that data and create ourselves a site. So we're gonna create this film little film database here and we're on a page called films that will list all of our films, but as you can see, it doesn't exist. So uh, under pages, we're gonna create a film directory and we're gonna create index.js and that'll define the path at slash film. And this is a pretty basic Gatsby component. Uh, this is called a page query. It's fetching all the films and the data we want. Gatsby passes that in here as the data object and we create this. So now if we go to films, voila, we've got our films listed out here. Now, eventually what we wanna be able to do is click on these and link to a page with more information. So let's create those pages with more information. And this is where we're gonna use new file system routing API, which is also still in beta. Uh, if you look closely, you might see a bug or two. So we're gonna create next to index for, with these curly brackets, which tells Gatsby this is a statically generated like app build time page. And we're gonna use the GraphQL type to graph film and the field name to create the slug of this page. And then like the other one, we have our GraphQL query that fetches the data. And additionally, we have a collection query to define how to get a list of all these pages that it has to create. So with that, we can come here and if we happen to know, there we go. We've got a, lit, a page for at least in the styles fire, but we have it for all the films too. Now, let's connect these up before we go any farther. So we're gonna come back here to our index.js and we're gonna add this query for Gatsby path. And we've got to add some information. This is basically built in as part of the file system routing. So we don't have to remake up that slug somehow. It just gives it to us. And we can pass that into a link component. And now, if we get our own films, voila, we can link to all of our films. And we are off to the races. All right, so if we check out one of these films though, wah, 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 we can't see these uh, actors and actresses yet. There's no pages for them. So we're gonna create now a client side route. So this has always been possible in Gatsby, but the file system routing makes it so much easier now. We just square brackets, ID, and that'll get passed in in this params element. So let's see what this looks like. Voila, okay, we got the ID. Now we can use this ID to make a request to our GraphQL database. And this is where Tina CMS comes in. So Tina CMS, according to their site, is not a CMS. It is a framework for building a CMS. Uh, so, we define our form for what we want to be able to, what's on this page. In this case, it's just a name. And we define this function called load initial values. And we can, and here we're making a GraphQL request to fetch the actor, information about them, all the necessary variables. 
And now, instead of just an ID, we load this character's name and the characters they've played. So this is awesome. We want to edit this data now. So let's, right? Yes, so let's work on that. So in addition to our load initial values, we now want to add this on submit. On submit will, when we submit the data, it'll take that form data, it'll make a GraphQL notation and load us all up. So let's check it out. Uh, we are on Nathan Ramos here. Let's edit him. He is a senior, evidently. I know none of you knew that, but I did. We hit save, we get some notifications that this saves, and on refresh, we see a nice little bug, but when it does load, Nathan Ramos is a senior. Awesome. And we can remove that if we like. And we're all good to go. All the bugs. All right, there we go. So that is good. Let's go back to our films and make these editable. So we come back to our, our, our file for these. We define our CMS and our form config, and we're going to be able to have the name and a description here. And that is going to be an HTML editor. We have our own. But we don't have to load the initial values because Gatsby was doing that for us. So we get film information here, and instead of loading them, we're just passing it in, and it's a static variable. And then we, but if we want to be able to save that, we do need to be able to write to the database. Gatsby's not going to handle that for us. So we define our own submit, and again, we have to define our GraphQL mutation here. So let's go to, we've got it. Yeah. Let's pick. Uh, Let's edit this one, sugar, sweetest movie you'll ever see. I believe that's an app description. I am 100% making up all these descriptions based on the title. All right, save. It's been saved, and let's refresh, and it's gone. Oh, right, because Gatsby fetches this data at fill time. We didn't tell Gatsby the data change. There's nothing to trigger a build. So we need to figure out how to do that. And this is where incremental builds comes in. And this is about to get really cool. This is like absolutely the coolest part of this demo. And maybe this entire conference you are going to see. So Gatsby has a refresh endpoint. It's what drives most of uh, Gatsby Cloud and incremental builds and all these fancy things. So back here in our component on our submit, we just need to post uh, to a webhook in Gatsby Cloud. And that is going to, uh, we're going to tell it the type of content that changed. So we've edited a film. We're telling it that it's updated as opposed to being created or deleted. And then we just tell it the ID. You notice we're not telling it what changed. It's going to handle all that for us. So uh, welcome to Master Branch, finally. Uh, MovieDatabase.moonmeister.net. If you want to go check this out, you can spam it away, and it'll probably fall over and break, and then I'll just take it off the internet. So uh, we're on full moon. The movie here, there's nothing. Let's get our login working. All right, let's give this puppy a description. The best view you'll have all week. Let's save it. So this is going to go so fast, hopefully, that your mind will be blown. So what's about to happen? I am going to hit save. That is going to save it to the data the database. It's going to trigger a build in Gatsby Cloud or wherever your build engine is, and using a webhook, Gatsby Cloud is going to do incremental builds, which means and the toolkit's going to handle the data and refetching of the data. Once that's done, though, 
Gatsby itself is going to go, hey, this one little piece of data changed, which means I don't really need to rebuild the whole site. I just need to rebuild this one page, this movie. And we're all good. And all that should happen in around 30 seconds. It feels like being a little slow, maybe a minute. So let's go. We hit save on our cloud. In the next couple seconds, we should see a build come through. It's so fast, you're not even seeing it. All right, it's already built in four seconds, and we're already deploying it, and we're already 10 seconds into deploying it. So as soon as this is done, deploying to Fastly, by the way, so there are 22 seconds. We were built and deployed Fastly. Um, we give Fastly another, another couple seconds here to get its stuff figured out. And this should be refreshable. So uh, let's, let's try hitting refresh. And it disappeared, kind of like I might have expected. We'll give it another couple seconds here. And there we go. Full moon, the best view you'll have all week. Uh, Welcome to the film database. Please go check it out. The code is all on GitHub. Please check it out. Big disclaimer, it's in the readme. This is very much proof of concept. It is not production ready. So uh, enjoy it, check it out, and uh, have fun creating awesome, completely like client side awesomeness that can also be great in uh, for speed and performance. So uh, my name is Alex. You can find me at these places and enjoy the rest of your conference. Thank you very much.